Welcome back to Book View Now, our coverage of the Miami Book Fair. I'm Jeffrey Brown, and I'm joined now by Carla Power to talk about her new book, If the Oceans Were Ink, An Unlikely Friendship and a Journey to the Heart of the Quran. Welcome to you. Thank you. Uh, uh, a, a, um, a book about a long period, but also a very to-the-moment book, yeah, correct? Yeah. You, you came to this as a journalist first, as an outsider to mm. Islam. Yes, um, I was raised um, by a lapsed Jewish mother and a lapsed Quaker father as a secularist and mm -hmm. had never read scriptures of any kind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but had grown up um, sort of half in the Midwest and half in the Middle East and Central Asia during um, a really tumultuous decade in, in Islamic history, the, mm -hmm. the 1970s, um, and watched you know, uh, lived in Iran and Afghanistan and Egypt and India and got interested in Islam that way and went on to study and write as a journalist about mm -hmm. Muslims, but realized I had never really sat down and read the Quran. Mm -hmm. um, and so approached uh, an old acquaintance of mine who was a very traditional Muslim sheikh and um, said to him, look, I really want to sort of not, it, it's not a primer for the Quran, right, rather right. it's an attempt to map where my worldview as an American secular Jewish mm -hmm. Quaker journalist <laughs> and his worldview yeah. as a traditional madrasa scholar converge and diverge. Before we get to, to where that okay. led to, yeah. because you also were dissatisfied with the way that Islam the religion was covered in the media, correct? Very much so. Yeah. Explain um, what you saw. You were part of that. I mean, explain definitely. what you saw, what what you were not pleased by. Um, I got frustrated. I sort of see my writing about Islam in sort of three three uh, phases. Um, the first uh, being, you know, certainly running around and covering um, terrorist atrocities mm -hmm. um, and having to respond to that. Um, and that is news. And then I would try to write features that kind of went against the grain of portraying crazy men with scimitars or bombs mm -hmm. and um, muffled, oppressed women, which seemed to me the two sort of stock stereotypes. Right, the that narratives were, that are told. Yeah. That are told. Yeah. So I would go around and I sort of, I sort of saw this phase as you know I'd write on Muslim punk bands or you know halal Red Bull or. Um, trying to, to tell stories of other ways that uh, Muslim lifestyle stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that in itself um, seemed to me to be just a pendular swing to, to kind of trying to say, you know, Muslims, they're just like us. Yeah. And sort of, it reminded me kind of of, of the, the, the magazines at the supermarket when you're checking out where you, you get shots of mm -hmm. Angelina and Brad, yeah. you know, sipping lattes yeah. or, or hoisting their toddlers. It's mm -hmm. sort of like celebrities, they're just like us. And of course, the reality is much more textured, dense, rich and strange than that. So, the, so studying, actually reading and studying the Quran, was it a, an experience of... Um, oh, I don't know, taking it in as an outsider sort of understanding? Was it a religious experience? Was it a, what kind of experience was it? Um, it, it varied. I mm -hmm. mean, there were times, you know, I would go on, on Saturdays and Sundays and go listen to um, the, the scholar I was, I was friends with and mm -hmm. then studied under, Sheikh Muhammad Akram Nadwi. And there would be An eight Indian, hour, Indian, right? He's Indian, yes. Indian born and raised. Yeah. Um, tiny village was so brilliant that he made it to Oxford University, which is where we met. I see. Um, and uh, sometimes it was it was really dull. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it um, some passages were absolutely ravishing mm -hmm. and were like the finest poetry. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have to say, um, I, I, I wanted, I, I mean, I wasn't going to, I didn't think I was going to convert. I, I, I wanted to be sort of taken away, away by all this, mm -hmm. and, and so, sometimes I was. Mm -hmm. um, but um, at, the, at the end, it was just a bridge I, I was not going to cross. Yeah. I was not going to convert. So, so, I mean, we have to fast forward to today, where mm. the world is again confronted mm. by 
terrorism that raises the, the, the questions of religious-backed, religious-based violence has to be something that you and the Sheikh discussed, right? Endlessly. Endlessly, yeah. right. So, what, so how, how, how do you think of it now? How do I think of it now? Mm. In an odd way, when I look out at these extremists that we're confronting, mm -hmm. um, both the Sheikh and I see them as tremendously modern. Um, these are guys, and I use the term advisedly, who overwhelmingly want what the West has. They want power, they want fame, they want money, and they want land. Mm -hmm. And I see them very much as coming out of a sort of very modern impulse to kind of, in, in post-colonial settings, after having gotten rid of European imperialists mm -hmm. in, in the Middle East, um, this became the, a language that they could rally people around. Whereas um, when, you, when you look back either at the Quran or at traditional scholars like, like my sheikh, um, there it's, it's, it's not about politicizing um, Islam. Instead, it's about a, yeah. a quiet um, piety and, and study. But do these people not do it in the name of the Quran and the course. name of Islam? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have wrapped themselves in the language of religion. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to say mm -hmm. they're not Muslims. Right. Um, that's but is it, so is it a question of different readings of the Quran or, or a hijacking of it or a... I mean, uh, well, certainly. I mean, the stuff you see coming out of out of ISIS is mm -hmm. is a hijacking beyond. You know, millions and millions of Muslims mm -hmm. are denouncing them mm -hmm. and and saying, "Where are you finding this in our books?" There's some very selective reading of very particular verses going mm -hmm. on, um, but they, you know, Baghdadi in in ba you know the head of ISIS, he's a he studied he studied the Quran and mm -hmm. so. You know, you get into a slippery slope if you start saying, you know, these aren't Muslims sort right. of thing. Right. Um, you know, I think that's, as the Sheikh would say, that's between them and their creator. He's not one to judge. Let me just ask you, we just have a couple of minutes here. I'm curious because there's often a lot of talk of here. Where are the moderate voices in Islam, mm. in the Muslim world? And, and you, and they, we know they exist. So I wonder, and I've met, I've met them as well, but yeah. you don't hear them. Well, and I have to say that is my profession's problem, I think. It's really, I mean, I talk to, to Muslims and over and over again, they say, look, we speak out. We just mm -hmm. don't get the coverage. I think that the terrifying thing is that these lunatics have found a way of staying in the news. They have found a narrative to tell. I mean, we, we're both journalists. We mm -hmm. know if it bleeds, it leads. Right. Um, Let's face it, quietism is a little dull. Mm -hmm. Being a good neighbor is a little dull and, and worshiping quietly and wanting your kids to do well mm -hmm. doesn't make the news. Mm -hmm. um, I think, but, but you know, it's heartbreaking to see over and over again, you know, top Muslim clerics will issue declarations denouncing. They're not gonna make the front page. Mm -hmm. I mean, who, you know, what an explosion is. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think, there's a real frustration in certain quarters of, of Muslim society saying, look, you know, do I ask my Christian friends to denounce the KKK just because they happen to be Christian? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. And they're getting a little weary of denouncing over and over again. And, and but, their sense is nobody's listening. And their sense is nobody's listening because, you know, um, I mean, one of the great ironies is, um, you know, I'll, I wrote recently on Islamic feminists, and they had found this verse in the Quran that, that they have called the DNA of patriarchy. This is the source of mm -hmm. why so many men feel that they can be heads of households and their wives are subservient to them. And they had parsed it and they had figured it out. And I thought this was news. Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote an editor and I was like, look at this. This is amazing. They've, they've, they've sort of turned, mm -hmm. you know, a millennium of, of interpretation on its head. This is news. And, you know, it ended up in the, in the lovely, quieter ideas section. Right. And if they had blown up something, they would have made it onto the news. So, irony. All right. Carla Powers is the author of If the Oceans Were Ink, An Unlikely Friendship and a Journey to the Heart of the Quran. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.